What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fathom, man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through a real slate and on uh, NBA Wednesday here. It was a, you know, just a, just an ugly slate last night in general. We knew it was going to be low scoring, but really hard to get the right pieces. Everything was sort of felt, you know, all over the place. I didn't do well last night. I, I've been doing pretty well with the NBA stuff, especially lately, but it was just a little bit of a hiccup and didn't, you know, not, 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 did, didn't play huge. It was one of those weird slates and ready to move on to this one. This is a nice big one, which uh, feels like it's only got one game that we should focus on at the, at the beginning, but uh, I'm sure things will change throughout the day to make that a little different. Sheets, how'd you do? And then let's jump into this. I've been slate. doing the way I've been doing most NBA slates, and that's been pretty terrible. So we'll uh, hopefully uh, continue. Hopefully we'll uh, continue to process, and hopefully things turn around. I'm happy with the way I'm. Well, happy with the way I'm playing. I'm, my usual C plus game of not paying attention after lock, but you know, at least I'm at least I'm helpful to you guys. At least uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll see if I can continue doing this because it's it's so hard to play the NBA if you're not going to be able to carry it all the way through. Yeah. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, uh, at least, at least I have an idea of what, of, uh, of what is supposed to be good, what are supposed to be good plays today. And they are, most of them that I have right now are late. So that's good. Um, yeah. but we'll see, we'll see what happens. Let's, uh, let's just get All into right. it. I guess. Let's get into it. All right. Well, let's talk about first, uh, Indiana, Charlotte. Um, why don't you start this one off? Because I, I sort of still up in the air a little bit with what I want to do here. Yeah. So I got a couple of things here. First of all, um, I do have uh, Lamelo as one of the top overall plays on the slate um, at 8,900, and, th- and then the other thing that that I want to well, and then I'll get to the, uh, kind of a speculative thing in a second. I also have again Miles Turner uh, for the other side, rating to be really cheap at 6,900. So um, both of them have top 10 values on both of them, so you can put the two of them together. The guy that at least you know at the irrelevant seven hours before lock, or excuse me, eight and a half hours before lock, who's showing up as a good point per dollar play is actually Theo Maladon uh, at 3,300. Um, you know, not the biggest deal in the world, only projecting for like, you know, 19 points or so, but I figured I was mentioning it. There's, I can't imagine a world where he gets played uh, by me, but um, uh, I'm just kind of reporting it. It's probably going to be either LaMelo and Turner or one of the two or nothing from this game. Yeah. So, I, so I, you know, I've been saying, Hey, I, I let's, let's be careful with LaMelo to start because I don't think they're going to give him the minutes. He played 33 minutes. Um, that's a good enough of a reason for me and a really good pace matchup. Uh, I definitely can get behind it. The Maladon thing seems super speculative at, at least. Um, I think that's, that might even be an understatement. I, I don't really know where the minutes are supposed to come from. I understand I in the last game that he got minutes, but that seems like a weird overreaction to me that we would assume that he will, especially against a team that likes to play three guards um may, maybe you could justify that that's how he gets the extra minutes and he and again he's gotten a few extra ones in the last couple of games I don't know how much I trust that to be honest with you um I think PJ Washington is an interesting play that no one's I, I mean I don't know I, I just feel like no, a guy who literally his name never gets mentioned but I mean he's basically averaging more than 5x this and Indiana plays big they've actually done a really good job against other bigs um but but maybe you can give him a bump in minutes I don't think I would play Plumley here but I, I do think that that this PJ Washington play is, is a little bit interesting. And then your wild card is, uh, is Rogier. I agree on the uh, indie side that I always have Turner in this type of a game. I mean, a team doesn't cover the three well and the team attacks the basket and gets their shot blocked a ton. So it seems like a good miles Turner game. It's going to be one of those situations where he's going to look like a good play early on. And how many people actually end up clicking that button? I don't know. Um, I also think you could, the, the, the problem with, with, the problem and the sort of the fun part of Indiana is more on small slates because you can sort of take a guess on which big man is going to, is going to get all the stuff. It was sometimes Isaiah Jackson. Sometimes it's Jalen Smith. One of Jackson or Smith, I think are, are interesting plays. They're a little fringy, but I think that they're, I think that they're at least interesting enough to mention. Um, Cause it's, it's, it's happened pretty much every game. Like one of these guys seems to, seems to get off it, with, with Nemhard is, is, is not, is not going to work for me. They're going back to this Hallibur, this Matherin off the bench. I think they, maybe that's your maybe that's your 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 play is is one of Halliburton or, or Matherin on the other side. But I kind of like this Matherin. Just I, you, look, you're not going to get it every night from him. He's you're going to see some some down games. They're going to give him every chance he wants, uh, and he's got a real ceiling. I mean, he can put up he can he can put up probably more than we've seen him put up yet in a game this season. And uh, I think he's really interesting. So. So I, I have I have all these guys on my list. I like this game as a potential stack, but I probably need like one more piece out to really make that happen. 
Um, but Matherin and Halliburton should be, I think, in play. And uh, yeah, and Halliburton being questionable. If if Halliburton actually does sit, this game becomes like the stat, uh, like a great stacking game to me. So I do like this one quite a bit right off the bat. I'd like to also say that uh, I do have Isaiah Jackson as you know a top ten value, uh, and I also have. Jalen Smith is kind of top 20. So it kind of goes in line with what you said. I think that it's pretty likely that one of them, you know what I mean, does something in this game. Uh, And if you're also, if you're playing multiple lineups, you don't play one of each, if if that makes sense. It's such a big slate. I mean, I don't think that either of them are just stone priorities, but, um, but they, but they both look like decent players. No, but maybe, maybe if you, if you find yourself with a real chalky thing and you've got another guy at 3,900 who looks chalky, maybe you make the weird bold play to Isaiah Jackson to win a tournament or something like that. Who's probably going to end up by the end of the day, like 1% owned. Um, and he can literally 10 X his price off the bench. All right. Minnesota, Orlando. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I'm just so disgusted with this Minnesota team. And I thought that, I mean, we all thought that was a horrible, I thought it was a horrible trade, but I thought it would be good for the regular season, at least for them. I don't know what the hell they're doing. Um, I, I, they, 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 because we go bears there, it's taken away a lot of Edwards, unless he has just an out, out, outlandish, like shooting night. It's taking away a lot of his upside, to be honest with you. And he'll, he'll get there sometimes like the Memphis game. I felt really good to have him that night. He played great against them in the playoffs last year. So that was a good spot for him, but he's, he's really not like as involved in the offense as you'd like him to be. And yet I still have interest in sort of continuing to, to take shots on him. Um, he's probably my favorite play. And then towns would be my second favorite play on the Minnesota side. It, it's actually a really good matchup for Gobert. So maybe you throw him into the mix too. Just because I think Gobert can get a million rebounds, Orlando misses a ton of shots. Uh, he'll, you you have other bigs on the other side, so he'll be near the basket-ish. Um, Carter and Bull both can shoot it a little bit, but I think that you're going to see. I think you're. Gonna, I think this could be a good game for 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 Gobert. Um, on the other side, I I don't really have anything except for a possible Jalen Suggs, and you've got Ben. We really won't know without Ben Caro and Carter available. Um, we're question. They're both questionable right now. If they're both out, that changes everything. Um, if Ben Caro's out, it's still probably just going to be Suggs for me. That's where I'm at on this one. How about you? Yeah, didn't they have a – didn't Mo Bamba have a big game the other day? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's an interesting that. one because he, he's never going to project well. And they've started to use him a little bit more in the rotation. Um, yeah, so I so I, I think that, that that could be an interesting play. Um, I don't really have too much, honestly, from this game. I have um, – I mean, I have Cat and Robert as like the two best plays, but they're all listen when 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 nobody else looks like a good play, it always defaults to the bigs as being usually the best plays. Um, right. In general, um, I don't really I don't really have too much. We'll, we'll watch for injury news. I think Banchero plays. It's a you know it's a decent low owned, you know stab I guess. Mm-hmm. But and if he's out, then then obviously you have to do some work, you know, and, and figure out yep. who to play. But I, I don't really have too much in this game. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to reemphasize that I think this is the kind of go bear matchup that I, that I'm, that I'm probably going to, I'm probably going to get a little bit of that. All right. Okay. See Washington. Um, look, in case you guys haven't heard about this yet, Shea Gilders Alexander is really, really good. <laughs> um, he is, I, I actually think that it's like as much as his hype as he's getting now, I think he's like seriously underrated. And for some reason, the sites tend to agree because this guy has put up 53 or more in four out of his last five games, including a back-to-back going into Boston where he basically single-handedly carried them to nearly a victory against one of the best teams in the NBA. He scored 37 real-life points in each of his last two games. Uh, I like the matchup against Washington. I I, I, I I really like Shea today, and for some reason, no one wants it, – it's weird with him. It's like everybody wants to play him, or he's like 50% owned, or he's like 5% owned, and it feels like that every slate. You also have the Jalen Williams possibility here and Josh Giddy. Um, there's a lot of possibilities I have in this game, as well as even guys like Poku, who's who's shown a real ceiling lately uh, as a guy who used to play at 3K, but he's, you know, he put up 47 in the last game, 43 a couple of games before that. He's sort of, you know, it's 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 a wide range of outcomes for sure with him. But I, I kind of like the idea of, of of getting to some of this stuff from, from OKC, but the, the priorities are always going to be Dort and, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, Giddy and... Uh, and Shay. Um, but a- other than them, I-, I do think you can include like the Jalen Williams of the world who- who's again, going to have a wide range of outcomes in general. But so if he's popular, I'll avoid it. If not, I'll use him as a, as a long shot play. 
I just wish I had something I wanted to run back on Washington, and I, I really don't have anything. Do you have anything on Washington? No. Uh, I like Washington against the spread in this game. Um, but I have, uh, as far as fantasy goes, I like, uh, I think, you know, like you said, I mean, Shea just ceilings it every day. I mean, what can I tell you? Um, if, if he would listen, I'll put it another way. Like if they, he was able to do it in like a literally impossible spot the other day. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm convinced. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, I think that he's just one of those guys that if he's under 10 K he's in play and sometimes maybe even if he's over 10 K, you know, so, um, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, listen, if I'll, if, if I get to him, I'll use him. If I don't get to him. I don't know if I'll force him in, but, um, but maybe, you know what I mean? Like I, I have him like below, you know, I have him only slightly below LaMelo ball and I have, I have Shea at like half the ownership right now. Um, so sure. Uh, I, I think he's very legitimately in play. Yeah. It's, it feels, it actually feels kind of crazy to me that we would play LaMelo ahead of him. I, I like the idea of playing them together. You know what I mean? Because right. Shays just does it every game. He's averaging 53 fantasy points. He's cost 9,400 and he's got a plus matchup. I don't really know what, what you know, it feels what like else you want, right? what, why is his projection hating him? And and the, the reason well, it's, really, it's really not hating. You know what I mean? I do have him like fourth overall, if you want to know the truth. Um, right, right, right. But I mean, just as even his fantasy point projection is, at being right. like 45, shouldn't it yeah. be every game? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and by the way, on top of that, I, I think I, I, my, I'm going to make it a priority to play one of he or Giddy tonight, at least. I, I really think that one of those guys goes off here almost all the time, or at least, you know, six, seven X is the, a, a healthy price tag. So I think both those guys are really, really, really in play. And then Jalen Williams, if he starts, is going to look like an awesome play. And I'll, I'll probably play him if he starts. All right. Um, let me just write that down so I don't forget. Um, all right, next one. What do you got? Is it the Atlanta one? Uh, I mean, I got Miami, Toronto, and then Boston, Atlanta. I have like very little from both games, but we'll deal with Miami, Toronto first, I guess. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, I mean, Butler, I guess. Um, re I really, honestly, don't have much of anything from this game. I wish I could. I wish I could lie to you, but I don't. I, I'm pretty much with you here. Uh, Butler and Caleb Martin would be my my two guys from Miami. It's a you know a tough game, maybe the kind of game we can get from Butler. And Butler's been pretty good without Hero, so I'll keep Butler on my list for now. Um, and then I and then uh, on the Toronto side, I don't I can't speak to anything until we know whether Gary Trent or Fred VanVleet are playing. And to be honest with you, even though even when they haven't played lately, it hasn't exactly been a, a fantasy you know player's dream. They, we've seen Barnes bust, we've seen OG bust. Um, it feels like we should do something. I think what I may end up considering is may maybe Van Vliet, even though I hate playing point guards against Miami, uh, maybe Van Vliet, if he does, if he does in fact get the go ahead, just because without, without Siakam, we've seen some huge games out of him. But as of right now, and then if, if those guys are out, I don't think 51 is necessarily too much to play for Banton. And I think Malachi Flynn becomes a great play if Trent and, and Fleeter and Van Vliet are out. Maybe not greatest. Okay, maybe he becomes a, he becomes in play. But you're right. Mostly this is a cross off for me. Really, really good real life basketball game though. Uh, Atlanta and Boston. Uh, Cheats, why don't you start this one off too? Because I I uh, I'm I'm no, sort no, of part, part of me wants to just 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 rifle ahead to Denver and then be done with the, done with the video. But all right, let's uh let's go uh Boston Atlanta. Um, yeah. Okay, so I do have Trey as actually only slightly below. Uh, Shea on the list, but it seems kind of awful against Boston to do that. Um, where I could just play Shea against Washington. Uh, uh so I, I would have to disagree with my projections a little bit as far as that goes. Other, other than that, I mean, DeJounte Murray just rates really low today. Jalen Brown got a price bump, I think, for Boston. He looks kind of high. Tatum at 10 9. All right, Tatum, I will say this. I mean, he's, he's rates to be 5 to 6% owned on this slate, um, and you can certainly get him in. Um, so that that's all right, I suppose. So so I guess Tatum and Trey, but I wouldn't play Trey today. Uh, so it would be either Tatum or, I guess, nothing? Yeah, I, I, I'm I actually – I'm on the Brown side in, in this kind of a matchup at the little bit lower price. But, if, but, again, these are not priority plays. They're guys I'm just considering at this time of the day. And then I'm definitely considering both Trey and and DeJounte on the other side, but don't feel overly excited about it. You know, we've gotten some big games from lately is Clint Capella. And 
I just think just just keep him on your early list. Um, I don't know where you're gonna we're gonna end up with him, but he's been like pretty damn good um, per minute and in general. So at 6,400, I, I could consider him, but overall, this is mostly a cross off for me as well. On the other side of that, by the way, that 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 Capella play, I mean. It's not his first time going back. He's probably played at Atlanta 74 times since he left there, but but it is Horford going back to Atlanta. Um, and he's been playing over 30 minutes in almost every game. And he's been um, pretty good. What's that? He's also been pretty good productive-wise. Yeah, so, I mean, he's he's certainly in play, as are probably a lot of centers. But, uh, yeah, I, I, he's fine. I wish he wasn't only center eligible. Not that there's so many, but I know by the end of the day there probably will be. But he's been, I mean, he's been over 26 in, what, seven straight, straight, straight games, four of those over 30 two at 37. That's, that's a reasonable guy to put in there. So I agree with that Horford call. I like that a little bit. Um, I'm going to keep him on my list for sure. Okay. Um, let's move over to uh, what do we got next? Chicago against New Orleans, New which Orleans. I guess, I guess the most important thing is to, to know whether, um, whether uh, what's his name? Uh, Zion is going to get back playing. Um, but yeah. wait, this is, this is weird. I'm getting – I didn't even know he was still in the league, much less on a team. But I'm getting a, a decent five-and-a-half-X projection out of Drummond. the once-and-future bum Andre Drummond. Mm -hmm. um, um, 3,900. When I first looked at him, I'm like, oh, is, is Vooch not playing for some reason? But no, I guess they just project him for enough minutes off the bench to make it work, 16 minutes. I, I, I don't know. I can't do that. Um, and then – on the New Orleans side again, just you have to. If, if Zion is out, I would go back to the same dudes from yesterday. Um, but if Zion's back, I really don't have much. Yeah, I'll take Levine um, here in this kind of a matchup. Um, I, I think he's. I think he's a really interesting play. I, the Drummond thing. So there's a lot of talk around that, that they're really disappointed in Vooch and how he's actually played in real life. And that they've been better on the court with Drummond, which is really almost you well, never look at that. these numbers. I didn't even notice this. Look at Drummond. He had 44 fantasy points in 22 minutes a few games ago. Yep, and that's what he can do. Um, he can, can he? Oh, wow. He can put up fantasy points. So he's on my list for sure. Oh, I, I don't know if I want to prioritize him. And, and the funny part is, I don't think anybody's going to play him. It, it feels Drummond, like Drummond as as bum might be an might be a cold, might be a bad take. I don't know. We'll see. But, well, he still is. A, I still don't think in real life he's a good basketball player. But right. that's neither here nor there. Um, I would say I, I, if I'm projecting, I would definitely assume that Zion plays tonight. I think that's why they sat him on the front end of the back to back. Okay. Um, I, I would just guess, but I, but again, I'm still speculating. They both games are at home for them. Um, and, and if anybody else were to sit, uh, I, I would have interest in Zion, but as it stands, it probably is just, uh, these guys all cut into each other just enough to where I, I probably don't want to play any of them unless Drummond, unless, uh, somebody is out. You know what? I am, I am going to. Talk politics for just a second, just because it just burned. I, I never funny, you didn't see the Drummond on Fox News thing. That's a whole other. No, thing. I didn't. I never. I never see. I, I never even have this on in my freaking office, <laughs> right? But listen, you know, it should be clear to everybody what side of the fence I'm on. But I'll tell you something. Like for all you hear about how Fox News is slant or whatever it is, CNN does itself no freaking favors. I hundred percent agree with you. I mean, you you look at you look at at, at the at the at the at the the headlines on on the on Trump's like announcing his bid. Every tr everyone is Trump launches bid despite coup attempted insurrection. Trump launches bid amid allegations of this. Trump launches bid despite multiple impeachment. Come on, it's, I mean, it's you know what I mean. Ridiculous. They're, They're doing themselves no freaking favors in the neutrality business either. So. Hundred percent. Um, let's, let's just call it what it is. Okay. Yeah, you couldn't you couldn't be preaching more to the choir. I'm I'm totally with you, and I I love my family, and I I share the same same political affiliation that they do. I have nowhere near the same the, the, the same. Just oh, we'll do the exact same things that we despise what the other side does. It exactly. just it makes no sense to me. Um. Anyway, anyway we can move let's, on. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's get on. Let's get on to Giannis at twelve six. Um. Um. Uh, so. We have Cleveland at Milwaukee, and as as, as tempting as it is to play Giannis at three percent ownership, um, yeah. oh man! And as tempting as it is, for example, to play Luke at five percent ownership, those price tags are just so high. <laughs> they're just they're just so oh. high. 
Yeah. Um, and Cleveland's no joke. You know what I mean? Like it's not like you can no. walk all over Cleveland. So probably going to be avoiding this game completely. Um, let me just make sure there's nobody great on Cleveland to play. No, I mean not really. Kevin Love, fifty six hundred. I not really. I, so I'm probably just going to avoid this. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. The early of, of part of every day has Evan Mobley projecting like phenomenally on Saber Sim. Every every day they 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 love they him. love him. They just love him. But um, but I, I'm okay. I, look, I I would be okay with Mobley. I don't understand. I, Kevin Love, the price is getting a little bit harder to to justify for a twenty some odd minute guy. Although he's incredible sometimes in those twenty some odd minutes. What's crazy to me is that boy Garland puts fifty up fifty real life points in the bucket, and all of a sudden he's nine k. Um, because of the question mark with, with Donovan Mitchell, if Mitchell's out, I, I'll do some things here. I don't think Mitchell's going to sit in this one. Personally, this is a really, really good game. I believe it's a nationally televised. Oh, it's not a nationally televised game. I got to figure out what the game is tonight. Um, but yeah, uh, look, I, I'm going to write Giannis down just because you're not going to get more than a few opportunities a year to get him at less than 5% ownership on a big slate. Um, usually on the big slates, he actually has a better chance of getting drafted because there's more value out there. So if value opens up, he's probably won't be five percent anymore. But that's a that's a pretty pretty cool take actually. Um, people would people would tend to think that that Giannis would be just because of lack of lack of players would be more owned on 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 uh, on short slates. But your but your your observation is really sharp that it's like kind of the opposite because you can only play Giannis when the rest of the slate allows you to, and right. and, and you so. The, the bigger the slate, the more opportunities exist for maybe value to open up to allow you to play him. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, and, and I think I think it's just an interesting thing that I've noticed. And you can sometimes find a short slate where there's a bunch of value or something, but usually it's going to be on the bigger slates with the more games. Um, all right. Uh, Houston, Dallas. Um, boy, this this feels very much like I don't want to do anything. Um, this more the, the Giannis and and and. Luca are going to be more in play on FanDuel. Uh, I guess you could take a shot at Tim Hardaway Jr. I don't know if I no, like that. No, no thanks, right? I mean, I yeah. Can't. If Christian Wood is out, though, because it's a back-to-back -back coming back from an injury, um, I think that I, I do think that that makes – I do think that, that would make Hardaway in play for me. Um, other than that, it would be Dinwiddie. Um, it would be the other guy I'd consider the bump to with, with, with Christian Wood out. But – as, it's weird though, because right now Christian Wood is looking like the best play on the Dallas I, against his former team. Maybe you take a little stab there, but for me, this is mostly a cross off. Yeah, Anything? me too. Me too. Okay. All right. So, so, so next Denver. So this is the deal. Um, so uh, uh, Jokic is out, and, and you hear about you know MVP candidates and 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 how you know Jokic's kind of fallen down the list this year or whatever it is because other. Um, I don't know about MVP candidates, but but if you want an example of of how much a player means to a team, I mean you'll you'll see what happens to all the projections, like all the Denver guys right. with him out. You know the entire offense runs through him, literally every possession. Okay, um, so with him out, the entire offense just goes other places, and everybody gets like enormous bumps um, from the, the obvious, right? Uh, his stone replacement right? DeAndre Jordan, but just everybody else like Jamal Murray. I mean, Jamal Murray, Aaron Gordon, Michael Porter Jr. Those are like the obvious. And then you want to speculate with even you want to go Zeke Nanaji or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, or Bruce Brown uh, or something like that. And you think, well, what does Bruce Brown have to do with Jokic being out? I mean, you don't think it has anything to do with it, but like, remember he's out. He gets, usually it's all the assists, all the, like all of everything, you know? So, so everybody just gets a bump and, Unfortunately, you know, I just don't think this this whole deal is fadeable. You know, it's just a question of how much you how many you have to play. Uh right. I think I think that three Denvers are certainly reasonable. Um and yeah, you know, I don't care how big this slate is, it's just just way too much goes to these guys. Mm -hmm. Um and then um not not to mention the fact that somehow, some way, I don't know where this happened, but playing the Knicks so, so suddenly became Coors Field. I I, I don't know when this when this happened, but a totally different thing than we've seen. I know it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. So, I mean, that doesn't, doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. And so I guess you have to look at the Knicks, right? So the, the first guy, by the way, I will notice as point per dollar play yeah. uh, is, is, is Emmanuel quickly. Oh, um, yeah. At 4,200, but the obvious plays 
um, I would imagine are going to be Julius Randle at all, but I don't, I don't really see them popping for some reason, which is really bizarre. Um, so I don't know exactly what I want to do with this, um, but I know I have to play a bunch of Denver's. Yeah, I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to I'm going to play Porter and or Murray in in most of my one of those two in most of my lineups probably. Yeah. Um, I think I'm, I'll mix in some Aaron Gordon, even though we've seen him fail at certain spots. If if one of those other two guys doesn't get there, it's probably Aaron Gordon. And I really like Bruce Brown tonight. There um, you go. I think they could use him in a small lineup. Um, I'm curious where the ownership ends up on him because it's it sort of feels all over the place. But if they don't start him, are people going to pay 5100 for Bruce Brown off the bench to go with these guys? And I think he I think he ends up getting some of the the like he did in uh, in Brooklyn maybe some of the center run in this game. They don't need to play necessarily huge. They can play their small ball lineup with Aaron Gordon matched up with any of the bigs from New York because he's got enough size to do it. So I, I kind of like the idea of, of, of getting a little game stack here, which the problem is New York is like the hardest team in the world to try to figure yeah. out how to stack. Um, I love Hartenstein. I'll go right back to him. I don't care about the down game. He fit, you got three, you know, three fouls in the first, I think six minutes that he played. Um I'm okay with the quickly idea, but what's interesting is now we're down to the, no one will play Cam Reddish coming off of 45 and 25. And now he's down to 3,600 again. Yeah. I know. Um, I'm going to have to have to include that into my list. At least you have to keep playing him. I think. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it's going to happen enough of the time. Um, I wouldn't chase the, the Jericho Sims stuff, but that's what's going to happen. If there's foul trouble, they're probably going to go right to Sims from Hartenstein. That's what they've been doing. Uh, Toppin hasn't really been playing that role for them. So I, I, I like the, uh, I mean, that, that, that's for huge field only, but right now I've got Hartenstein as the only one I really want. It'd be nice to, to make an excuse for RJ Barrett or Julius Randall or Jalen Brunson. I just don't love any of those guys, um, but they all look just fine to me. They look like they should all be right around their, their projected total number. Uh, it is a back-to-back for the Knicks, keep in mind. Um, and this should, this should, you know, without Jokic, you'd assume the game would stay fairly close, but it's tough to go into Denver on a back-to-back no matter what. Yeah, there's still a five point underdog even with Jokic out. Yep, yep. Um, all right, Golden State at Phoenix. Um, could be a preview of something. I don't know what, but it could be a preview. Like you're of supposed something. to, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a preview of something. I I don't. It's a, a really a good game. It's a you know important that this Golden State team can't win on the road. I can't find a play that I can talk myself into on on their side except for Clay Thompson. Um, I'm just gonna keep playing Clay Thompson. And a count on his shooting improving. Uh, is Clay Thompson shoot? Let me just see real quickly. Is he shooting worse than Westbrook? I think he might be shooting worse than Westbrook from three point range. Westbrook, by the way, who leads the Lakers in three point shooting. I just always keep that's throwing terrible. That out there. That's a horrible um, thing. I, I mean, Clay Thompson is as you know, he's putting up thirty five the other day with six of sixteen from the floor. He was six of eighteen against Sacramento. He put up twenty nine. Like if he starts making some shots, this guy's going to be just a, a walking forty. So I, I actually think Clay is is a really good play here. Um, and it's a tough matchup, obviously, against Phoenix, but I I, I will play some clay um, in this one. And on look, we have the, the 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 everybody loves DeAndre Ayton to start the day every day. Uh, if look, if Chris, if if we don't know till later, and Chris Paul gets out is out again, Devin Booker is an awesome play. Absolutely. And so uh, and Cameron Payne is probably a little too expensive, but still probably in play. And De- DeAndre Ayton would be a, a, another one I would look to. Aiden's going to be popular, I think, or look popular early in the day. Who knows what that really means with him? He just never, I mean, even when he got there the other night, he played really well against Miami and he put up, you know, 16 and 12, but he, he had 36 fantasy points. It's not like the, like, even when he gets there, it's not like this, he's not getting 45s for you. I mean, he will sometime, but if there was a matchup to get 45, this is, this is the one to do it. I mean, you got no real true big help from, from Golden State. They've been getting crushed down low. Maybe I can talk myself into Aiton. So I, I it's going to be Chris Paul with a question mark, but eight, if not if not him, Aiton or Booker. And by the way, Booker's still been consistently in the three percent owned range, even on small slates without without uh, without uh, Chris uh, without Chris Paul. And now this is a great matchup. I I might just gamble and play Booker because he can get there if Chris Paul plays anyway. He's put up fifty and two out of the last three without Paul, fifty nine in one of them. Um, I think he's another awesome nine nine k ish guard that that i think i'm gonna have some in, some interest in tonight yeah i um i think ayton is basically the late game equivalent of miles turner 
<laughs> like it, it looks really good. Uh, mm -hmm. looks pretty good in projection wise and looks like people are going to play them. I don't know if they actually will or not. And I don't know if I'm going to actually play them, but I regard Aiden as very similar to Miles Turner today. Yep. Totally. Uh, Totally agree with that, except for the one the one thing about Turner, though, that I'll say that, that he's got over eight and so far, at least sometimes he goes nuclear. Like, you know right, what I mean? That's true. You get the you get the 60 every now and then or the 50 foot plus. We don't just ever see it out of eight. It just doesn't even seem to matter. So so for, for a real ceiling, I think I'd give Turner the edge there. But I hear what you're saying. I definitely feel well like and pay attention, by the way, to the uh, to the island sort of semi island nature of these last two games, uh, Denver and the Knicks. Like if you're you took some shots and you're struggling. You can't just play this super duper chalk on Denver. Um, you got to do something else. Um, yeah, and, and you might have that opportunity if Chris Paul doesn't play. It feels like the kind of game he'll come back for. Okay. Should, should we mention that that Chris Paul probably isn't the worst play in the world if he plays? Um, okay. Maybe, maybe I'm talking myself into too much here, but it, it's it's the kind of matchup that he he would go hard at. He's coming back, and if he's coming back against Golden State, I mean, I don't know. He's got to get tired of all the Steph talk and all this you know, he's over the hill and everything. I don't know. I'm just, just sort of, maybe, maybe I'm creating too much, but I, I do think that, that I, I like the idea of, of taking chances on these last games. And then partly why I like Reddish so much today is that I can always swap off that 3,600 to a better play if anybody's out later on. Um, but that's, that's, that's my thinking of, of getting Reddish in, but the priorities for me, uh, and, and there's too many to start, but that's okay. Lamello, Shea or, or Giddy. Um, if I can't, if I could only read my writing. Uh, for for value, uh, Jalen Williams, Andre Drummond, Cam Reddish uh, are the ones who stand out with potentially quickly. Uh, other plays: uh, Murray, Jamal Murray, uh, Michael Porter Jr., or Aaron Gordon. And then I have the uh, who else do I have? Uh, oh, Aiton or Booker in the late game with a possibility of Levine and Giannis in between. All right. Um, we'll be live at 6.30 Eastern, uh, 6.36 Eastern tonight, excuse me. Um, is that right? That's that's right, right? We decided that? Yes. Yep. All right. So we'll be live at 6 Eastern. And uh, yeah, let's make some money, guys. Good luck to everybody. And uh, we'll see you hopefully at 6 and hopefully later on at the top of the leaderboards.